What's going on guys and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I will be reviewing the Color Finale 2 Pro plugin, giving you my honest opinion about it. Now I actually reached out to Color Finale themselves to send me their newest plugin. They happily agreed to it and have sent me their product for free. I was not paid to say anything. I don't do that kind of stuff. Oh wow, thank you Color Finale. I will certainly just say the good things. Oh, uh, we're still recording. Um, the reviews I make are my honest opinion because I want to say truthful truth, helping you make the right decisions. I have been using the first version of Color Finale since the beginning, but after Final Cut Pro X has updated its advanced color correction tools, I haven't been using it at all. Though with the new update of Color Finale 2 Pro and using it for a few weeks uh, with its improved feature, I quickly realized how much better my workflow got if you know me, you know how much I like saving time. With that said, honestly, I do prefer Call of Finale. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next video. Not just joking. Now, don't get me wrong. You can do a lot with the standard color tool that is provided in Final Cut Pro X. With this review, I'm hoping to give you a deep understanding of the plugin so that you can make the right purchase decision for yourself. Now, I will go through the important functions and some of my favorite features that I find really cool about Color Finale. Let's hop to the computer. All right, so I'm a Sony a7 III user and I shoot all of my footages in S-Log2. To color correct my footage, I add Color Finale by dragging it onto the clip. You will notice that the interface is really well made. Before I start working with layers, I convert all of the footage to normalize it. Now, I don't like manually correcting log by hand because I do it the fast way. Now in the standard Final Cut Pro X color tool, I had to add a custom LUT to the footage, search for the speed LUT and apply it. Now with the management tool in Color Finale, I can simply select assume log and it immediately converts the footage that fast. This way you also don't need to buy additional speed LUTs. Another option would be to select ACES, which you basically can input the log footage you're using. Works really great too, but I usually uh, go with the assume log. So here you have the exposure, contrast, and pivot points. I don't really use these settings. I prefer to work with the layers option, which we'll get into later because it gives me more control over the image. So moving on to the white balance, when color correcting your white balance, you can now use the eyedropper tool to select an area that is white to auto correct it. Now, if you want to get accurate with white balance, it's recommended that you use a white balance card like the x right Color Checker Passport. This again, saves me time to correct my white balance. Or if you want, you could also use the auto white balance, which also does a good job. Next, we have the temperature, tint and saturation slide. Now there is also a sharpening feature. This feature provides far more better results than Final Cut Pro's X uh, built-in sharpening tool. I don't use sharpening that much, but if I have to, this is definitely a great option. You also have the ability to copy your color finality settings onto another clip. You can also choose which settings you want to apply, which I think is very useful. So now we will move on to the edit layers option, which is one of the more powerful areas. So here you can add the basic color wheels, the curves, the six vectors and HSL curves. These are really the tools you'll be working with most. Usually after base correcting the footage, I create a look. I add an adjustment layer on top of the footage and drag color finale. In the layers option, I can select LUT gallery to preview all of the LUTs. Make sure to check live preview to see how the LUTs will look like when applied to the clip. Now, Color Finale comes with 11 LUTs as a standard that you can choose from. You can also increase the size if you want to have a better look at the image as well. So after applying the LUT, you can also dial back the opacity 
if it's too strong. Usually you want to do that because it's not like Instagram where you can just slap a filter on it. Now, one of the great things about having Color Finale is that you can export your own LUTs. I really enjoyed the process of creating my own look and a lot of you have been asking for my LUT. Lucky for you, I now created my own store. I will be selling my LUTs, uh, Lightroom presets, and also mini courses on my website. You will find the page in the video description below. Check it out and make sure to sign up for the newsletter to stay updated. I appreciate all of your support. Now back to Color Finale, I really like how you can rename the adjustment layers and also group them together to keep everything organized. Another great feature is the masking option. You can either add mask to one of the layers or add a mask to a group of layers. Now, when you add a mask, it will either affect the inside or if you choose to invert it, the outside of the mask. This can be very helpful in many ways. Uh, if you are, for example, want to create a vignette or correct skin tones. And here comes the great part. You can track the mask so that it stays where you want it to be. So going back to the interface, what I really like is the image analysis tool that comes with a built-in false color. This way you can analyze the overall exposure of the image, but also see how well uh, the skin tones are exposed. Another great way to check the exposure of the skin tones is using the isolate tool with the Luma waveform. What I also use it for is to correct the skin tones by isolating it and analyzing the vector scope, making sure that it's generally on the skin tone line. So now I don't have to create a mask and can do this straight in Color Finale. So Color Chart is another great tool to calibrate the colors in your image. I own a Color Checker Passport. Oh, this is my Swiss Passport, sorry. Here it is. I use this a lot for client projects. This again saves me a lot of time not having to color correct the image from scratch. With Color Finale 2 Pro, you will get the film emulation, which allows you to add film grain to your video to give it a more stylized look. Again, if you like that look, you don't have to buy a third-party plugin and have it all in Color Finale 2 Pro. Like in the layers option, you can adjust the mix slider to reduce the intensity of your overall input setting. Now, there are a few things that I wish Color Finale had. Dum -dum. Now, something that I use really often is vignette. It would be great if they would just add that on the interface as a slider instead of having to create a mask. Another thing that I can't find is the color masking. I find this important for selecting and changing hues. Of course, you could use the color picker tool, but I find it easier and more accurate using the color masking, which is already provided in Final Cut Pro X. Overall, Color Finale is a really powerful plugin, at least for me, making it faster uh, to color correct and color grade my footage. If you want to have Color Finale 2 and want to buy the Pro version, it will cost you 150 bucks. If you have Color Finale and want to upgrade to the Pro version, you will not have to pay the full price, of course. I recommend you test it out to see if it speeds up your workflow. There is a seven day free trial to it. Definitely wouldn't hurt testing it out. I will leave a link in the video description below if you want to check it out. So yeah, guys, thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please leave a like and let me know in the comment section below if Color Finale is worth buying for you. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do it right now. You would help me immensely. Follow me at Bennett Grazer. Have fun color correcting and I will see you in the next video. Of course, you can use the Color Pickle Tool. <laughs> pickle. <laughs> pickle Picker Tool. Picker Party. Of course, you can use the color picker, pickle pepper pick. I'm gonna get this one right. Of course, you could use the color picker tool. <laughs>